that little motion right there, unintentional, of course, caused a lot of chaos in this episode. Thanks to Jerry's uh, eating habits. As Jerry trying to eat healthier caused George to get grapefruit pulp squirted in his eye. And George is winking and it causes a lot of confusion. Awkward moments. But on the bright side, it leads to a promotion. What promotion exactly? I don't know exactly what his job title was after this. Um, but yeah, pretty funny episode, The Wink. Like I said, uh, the story was um, Jerry was trying to eat healthier. Uh, they were out eating at Monk's. And I guess Elaine was talking about how, um, how, um, uh, she was trying to set Jerry up with, with her cousin, Holly. Um, they were going to go eat dinner. Jerry's mentioned that he's trying to eat a little healthier, though, and not really eat much meat. He was eating, like, I forgot what he ate, but I know one thing he had was grapefruit. When he went to go pick up the grapefruit, it squirted right into George's eye. Uh, and he got, like, the grapefruit pulp that kind of, like, burned his eye. Well... George then starts go, goes back to the Yankees, and he is, of course, um, responsible also for getting everyone to sign uh, Steinbrenner's uh, birthday card. And the only person who hasn't signed it yet is Mr. Morgan, who's been under some hot water recently, and apparently he's been late a lot. Um, so, but of course, so of course, um, Mr. Morgan mentions that that and how he's been under hot water. Um, and um, he basically tells, uh, also tells George make sure that Steinberg doesn't see that birthday card until he signs it. And then I guess he was going to be going out for a, a massage with um, his wife. And he says, hope it's fun. And he says stuff like that. Or, you know, like this. And uh, Mr. Wilhelm, uh, his boss, then comes in and says that, you know, there's going to be some stuff going anything going on with Mr. Morgan who's been being late. And he goes, oh, nothing going on at all. And so there's obviously, you know, People misinterpreted it, thinking that George is no thinks he knows they think George knows something that they don't, but it's just George doing an involuntary wink from the burn from that grapefruit. So that starts causing a ruckus there, which is of course not known. Meanwhile, Elaine, I guess, has a wake up call service at 7 15. And I guess she kind of gets talking with the wake up call guy who she's never met in person, and she gets set up on a blind date with him. So she meets him. Things seem to be going well until they go to leave and she finds out that he has dogs. And the last encounter we see with Elaine and dogs was back in the season premiere where she got frustrated with that dog that kept barking right outside her apartment window. Um, and um, she also um, uh, took part in the kidnapping of the dog. So obviously she does not have much of a good history with dogs. You know, she lies to James and says that she loves dogs. But again, doesn't have a good history with them. So then uh, Jerry goes out to eat with Holly. And I think I remember she mentioned something about how, like, you know, Holly, you know, despite that her and Elaine are, like, cousins or whatnot, whatever it is. Uh, she mentions how, like, Elaine's not really as, like, you know, big on, like, the family traditions or rituals or like, the family antiques. As she is. Which of course plays an effect to something later on in the episode. So when Jerry goes to order. Not telling Holly of course that he's been trying to eat healthier. He asks the waiter a lot of questions about like the meats and whatnot, And then he decides he'll just have a salad. And his head is being just a salad. Just a salad. Now he's worried that like, he looks like a wimp in front of his girlfriend. Because um... Well, the waiter kind of gave him a little bit of like a weird look after he said he'll have just a salad, even though it's like a big, fancier restaurant. So he's panicking about that. Um, meanwhile, of course, George is with everyone, and uh, he has the birthday card for Steinbrenner. Well, I guess there was a he was talking to Kramer about. It, says, "Can I can I have this?" And he says, "Oh, sure, go ahead, take it, and do it, do whatever you'd like with it, or something." I forgot what he said. Like, some, but 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 it led to him going winking thinking that oh Kramer that, that, that this card wasn't really going to be you know like given to Steinbrenner you know it was really you know just something else going on so the wink threw Kramer off well Kramer goes to like one of those like antique stores and tries to sell the card to get money for it 
And when the guy sees that it's signed by basically all, all the Yankee players and staff members, he buys it off of Kramer for $200, frames it, and then gives it to, um, and then gives it to a, to a terminally ill kid at Children's Hospital named Bobby. So then, of course, George, you know, was talking with Mr. Morgan, you know, and you know, I guess his wife thought that the massage was awkward or whatnot. And, of course, you know, he says, you know, he feels like, he, like he's he's in hot water and he's going to be losing his job soon. So George, to be nice, sets him up with the um, the wake-up call service that, um, that Elaine had where she met her current boyfriend, James, which... I said before the, the guy who has who's, who's a dog lover, but Elaine's had her recent problems um, with dogs, so um, he sets her, him up to have a wake up call service. That way, you know, he wakes up uh, and isn't and isn't coming in late for work. But of course, he says, you know, he asks about the birthday card, and George goes, "Oh, I I, I left it at home, basically, or something like that." He says, "It was make sure again." He says, "Make sure Steinbrenner does not get that card before I sign it." Which, of course, he realizes he's doomed because, of course, later on, um, he goes to find Kramer and he finds out that Kramer had sold the card. And, you know, he said, well, because of the winking, he's, and then George realizes and his winking's, like, you know, leading to all this, like, confusion and whatnot. And, of course, you know, Kramer keeps thinking that George is still winking and telling him, you know, that, you know, he's not, he's not really upset. But he, and he literally holds his eyes up and he's like, get the card back! So Kramer then goes to see um bobby and he tries to talk bobby and let him have the card back and bobby's like no i can't do that um so um so then uh kramer says here i'll make a deal with you he goes who's your favorite baseball player and bobby says it's paul o'neill who was paul o'neill's famous when he was, he was with the reds he he did he made that one play where he like he like uh, boggled the ball and instead of like throwing it back in, he kicked the ball back in. Which if he didn't kick that ball back in, uh, and and didn't go to where it did, runner would have scored on the play instead of stopping at third base, which was a very rare play you probably ever see. Um, and of course, a solid hit or two, but not really a home run hitter. Actually, let me check something here. Let me check something here. Paul O'Neill. I would like to see his stats. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Paul O'Neill said he's not really a home run hitter. Oh, come on. He still hit 281 home runs. He's Why do he call himself not a home run hitter? He can hit home runs. Okay, hit like... 1996. 19! Paul O'Neill claimed in this episode... That he's not a home run hitter. Yeah, he hit 19 home runs. Or this is made, this is episode probably 95. So 22 home runs, like 20 home run hitter. He could hit two home runs in the game. He said he couldn't do it. Ah, uh, Paul, Paul, Paulie. But of course, you know, um, you know, him and Kramer watch the game, and Paul O'Neill hits a home run in the first inning, and his last at bat. It was strange. He goes for an inside the park home run, yet the ball was well, it was a wild throw to home plate, and the catcher didn't catch it, and O'Neill was safe. They ruled it a triple and a throwing error, which was not a true home run. And then, um, and then you know he I Kramer had to make another deal by saying by t- by basically saying telling George that Paul O'Neill has to catch the ball a ball in his hat. Um, and, you know, the deal will be settled with, with Bobby. But of course, since the card was already, you know, mounted and framed and made all big, unfortunately, Mr. Morgan was not able to sign it. And the other problem was, gotta circle back here a little bit, because it was all because of Jerry. So, Jerry and Elaine go to Holly's, and Holly makes mutton, which is some type of, like, a meat. And again, Jerry, you know, would probably eat it if he wasn't trying to eat healthier. So when Holly wasn't looking, Jerry was spitting out the meat and stuffing it in his, his jacket. Well, then uh, Elaine and Holly get into an argument, and Elaine leaves and takes Jerry's jacket. But Elaine, Jerry's trying to tell him, "No, take it." She goes, "Jerry, I'm cold. I need it." And basically, the problem was was um, not that the mutton was inside the, the pockets, but the napkins. They're Elaine's and 
Holly's grandmother's napkins or whatever heck it was. Basically, it was family antique napkins were in um, the, those pockets, his, his pockets. And on the way home, Elaine got chased by dogs. And the only way to escape was to stop at James's. And, you know, she asked if he, he could spend the night. But the only, only, um, the only uh, bed he had was he slept on a sofa bed. Which, I don't get this, but they agreed to sleep head to toe. But my thing was, was well, why did they sleep head to toe? Is this too early in the relationship? Or what is it that, that they, they, they can't just sleep normally? I, I didn't get that. But because Elaine kept James up all night because her feet was in his face all night, he slept in and he missed a few of his clients' wake-up calls. And one of them was Mr. Morgan. So not only does Mr. Morgan not get to sign the car because it was already mounted in, but he also doesn't wake up and he's late for work again. And unfortunately, he got fired and George got promoted. All thanks to his winking. Now, of course, uh, for a few days, though, Holly was calling Elaine constantly, accusing her of stealing her napkins, which Elaine kept saying she didn't have him. Of course, though, um, the dogs, though, were eating it into Jerry's coat because they smelled the mutton, but Elaine didn't realize it um, until she had left Jerry. She got she had got to Jerry's, and Holly was supposed to be coming over to make pork chops because she thought that Jerry loved her mutton. Um... Of course, Elaine shows up, they argue again, but she realizes that she left um, her ja Jerry's jacket back in James' apartment. So her and James, of course, weren't really on good terms because James costed her a bunch of his clients because she costed James a bunch, bunch of his clients because um, of her feet kicking his face and they sl he slept through his alarm. So um, he agreed to come by and bring the jacket. Well, the thing is, though, is he, of course, also he found um, the napkins in there and he used them as like little bandanas and collars for the dogs he brought the dogs to the apartment of course elaine freaked out and holly flipped out because she saw the bandanas at the same time jerry had been spinning out the pork chops and hiding them underneath his sofa couch it, 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 the pillows on his, on his sofa and of course he's busted there for that as well and of course his jacket i think got pretty much ruined and then, of course, the episode ends with, you know, George being told that, you know, Mr. Morgan was fired. Um, and then that George got promoted. But he, um, and of course, be a lot more work. And then, you know, he, he and it's not matter, like, you know, goes on and on. I believe he had to let, he's had to let go over the years, like, you know, Bucky Dent, Yogi Berra, Billy Martin. And, you know, and after every one or two names, he would say Billy Martin. Because, of course, of Billy Martin's coming back and coming and leaving. A fun fact, though, was the last one he mentioned was Buck Showalter. George, George, you didn't hear that from me. Ironically, though, two or three weeks after this episode aired, Buck Showalter was let go by as a Yankees manager. Uh, of course, Showalter would not manage again until he, I think it was 2011 when he became manager of the Orioles. Uh, a couple years ago, he was fired by from the Orioles, and now I believe he is manager for the Mets. So... Good old Buck is still doing his work, but, um, yeah, so Jerry's eating habits cause chaos with Elaine and dogs, George is winking, and, of course, a poor terminally ill kid was not able to keep a, keep a $200, um, autograph signed birthday card from the Yankees, and Mr. Morgan lost his job. That just sucks, but it's quite a, quite a story, quite a chain of events, quite a string of Dumb luck, as they call it. But that does it. That is the Wink episode. Next episode is the Hot Tub, which Kramer's crazy tactics causes some problems in the next one. What is that? You'll find out next as we get to the next episode, the Hot Tub. So once again, guys, what were your thoughts on the Wink Please be sure to, um, to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, make sure to slap a like on the video, subscribe, more content on my channel, and follow me on Twitter at TheManAirBoy93. You will not be disappointed in future videos on this channel. Have a great night, guys. I hope you sleep well.